So we've done the calculations, and what you're telling me is that with these specimens on the table, we have over three million dollars. That's it. Hey everyone, we're at the 2022 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, and we are back with a wonderfully familiar face, Christopher. He is with Collector's Edge, which is a mineral and specimen dealer based out of Colorado, mm -hmm. and he has some amazing specimens for us today. So I saw that you guys did a video where you had a million dollars worth of specimens and gems on the table, so I thought we might be able to uh, up that a little bit. Yeah, you know, Christopher is competitive. I want to start off with a little bit of a game. Okay. So here we have some very fine mineral specimens. One of these all by itself is over a million dollars. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh, the colors. So let's go from our left to right. So what you've got in your hand there is a beautiful rhodochrosite crystal. Rhodochrosite from Colorado. Underneath, there's a little bit of chalcopyrite and a little bit of tetrahedrite. The Sweet Home Mine was originally a silver mine and wasn't very successful because a lot of the silver is actually bound up in this tetrahedrite. That color, that is just like the richest. Rhodochrosite can be anywhere from like a light pink mm -hmm. to that rich red, which is obviously the most prized. Yeah. And this one's about as cherry as it gets. Yeah. The color is absolutely all natural. My goodness. Okay, let's go to this guy. That is a barrel. I think it would be classified as aquamarine. It's more predominantly blue, but mm -hmm. it has a strong green tint mm -hmm. to it. Very strongly greenish blue. You see a lot of etch marks. Mm -hmm. There's like this, like, I don't know, like mystical quality about it. It's kind of like to raindroppy. Me, it like... really, it looks almost like an alien language yes. just coming down the side of it because of the etch pits. It's obviously massive. A lot of the time with gem crystals, a lot of what you want to see is that vertical. You know, it's impressive how tall they are, so this one is one that you would definitely display mounted up like that. And will you explain why that is so impressive for a gem specimen? Think about anything that you've had to cook a long time, and you have to have your recipe and everything just right. How many times have you overcooked it or undercooked it? For a crystal to form with high clarity and great form, the geological conditions have to be just right. To grow a crystal over the course of possibly many years or many thousands of years, imagine how stable that has to be. This one is from Medina, Brazil, which has produced some of the finest aquamarines in the world. I wouldn't mind having that in my collection. Let's go to this specimen and we'll be very careful with it. So, gold. Yes. This one is from the Colorado Quartz Mine. Some very interesting hoppering happening with the crystal. Yes. That's why you see that triangular yes. form. Can you explain why that happens? So the energy is very, very high at the crystal edges when it's forming, and there's not enough material to complete a crystal face there. So you wind up with kind of a void in the middle. The other thing that is of real note for this piece that makes it so exceptional is the high luster. A lot of times, gold pieces occur in quartz as veins, and you have to use hydrofluoric acid to etch it out. When you do that, it frees the gold, and you can see some nice forms, but it typically doesn't have the high luster. In the Colorado Quartz Mine, we had this piece here that actually formed in a pocket, so this was not etched out of the rock. It actually formed free, and that's why you have this incredible luster to yes, this piece. That is it's so cool. Also very cool that it has the little side quartz crystal in the middle there, too. That's just a nice little side dish. So your challenge is, game. which one of these is over a million dollars? The gold one is actually the most difficult one for me because mm -hmm. I have no concept for mm -hmm. gold prices as they relate to mineral specimens. Mm -hmm. So I feel pretty helpless on that one. I'm thinking the rhodochrosite is more five figures. I hate to choose the largest one, but I think I'm gonna choose the barrel because of the clarity, the color, and the size. Flip your card. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> nice! <laughs> you got it. I'm very curious. Okay, so that is so expensive. Mm -hmm. I was way off on that one. Okay, let's start with the million dollar. So the price for this one, easy payment plans, yeah. <laughs> uh, would be $1,250,000. 
Yeah, so, so explain the price. So again, most of the finest aquamarines in the world came out of the Medina City area in Minas Gerais, Brazil. And again, it's just exceedingly rare for the conditions to exist whereby these were able to grow in this long prismatic crystal here. The etchings, it's super aesthetic. Actually, if you look on the back here, we have some of this area where there's a little bit of a gap and actually isn't as aesthetic as the other side. That's what actually keeps this from being more along a two or a three million dollar specimen. Interesting. Although there's still plenty of interesting so geology yeah. there. So when you put that on there, did it feel like you were holding a million dollars in your hands? I mean, I felt pretty special. <laughs> So this one, I am mm -hmm. quite shocked by the price, mm -hmm. just because I don't mm -hmm. know that market very well. A lot of people are used to buying uh, gold based on weight. If it's just a mass, it's worth what the weight is. With a nice little form nugget, it might be worth 20% more than the gold. If the nugget's from a known and important locality, it might be 50% or more. But when you get into finely crystallized gold, especially mm -hmm. on matrix and not etched out like this, it enters the realm of fine art and literally at the weight of the gold is less of a factor than all of the other factors combined. But I would be very curious to touch that gold. Do you know what that feels like? It looks kind of aluminum I'm, foily, kind of corally, like. I haven't touched the gold on that either. Cleaning it off would be something you would want to avoid, so you wouldn't want to leave any fingerprints or oils or anything yeah. else that could cause the patina or anything to yeah. occur on it. So I'm right there with you, yeah. I don't know. But no, it, it just looks so touchable. It You're just does. like, oh. And uh, this one was 350,000, a little less than a third of the price on that one. Yeah, that is impressive. Okay, rhodochrosite. So this one was uh, 125,000, and it's a spectacular piece. Just a lot of change. Yeah, a lot of the times you don't see anywhere near as high a price for a single rhombohedron like this one, but this one, the quality is just so exceptional, especially with the color. That is so cool. So I've got a few others, but I'm not going to make you guess on those. Oh, you thank did you. very well. You have passed <laughs> the test. Let's do this next one here. Look at that. That one's pretty special. Is that silver? That's silver. Explain yes. to us what is going on here. So this is a Kongsberg silver, one of the most renowned localities for silver. This is specifically a wire silver. So you're seeing silver and then the darker blackish material that you're seeing is a canthite, which is a silver sulfide. With wire silvers, it's really dynamic. You wanna see a very aesthetic presentation. This one has an overall just flow to it. You've got all that beautiful crystallization on the edges with these little guys coming out. You know, I really need to work on my metals because mm -hmm. I don't have any preconceived notion about what mm -hmm. that should cost. Honestly, what you're looking at here might be somewhere in the neighborhood of $100 of silver or less. With silvers and with coppers especially, the actual intrinsic metal price is all but irrelevant. That feels not irrelevant to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 400,000 for this one is not a number I would consider irrelevant. <laughs> Pieces like this are very difficult to care for. You, you know, do want to have a nice case and you know, secure place to uh, to keep these pieces. When people do acquire these pieces, you're literally becoming the custodian for the future. You know, a piece like this might eventually wind up in a museum. People are going to learn from this for years, decades, centuries to come. So let's do some math. Mm -hmm. So 1.25 plus 350 would put us at 1.6. Four would bring us up to two, and right. then we should and be at 2.125. Yeah. yeah. So we have over $2 million worth of gems on this table. And we're not done. We've still got more to come. There's more? There's more. Oh my goodness. Oh, you know how much I love this. Yes. Look at that. A nice big tourmaline. Elbite? Yes. With quartz and... Albite. <laughs> Elbite with albite and quartz. So this is from Afghanistan? Mm-hmm. Um, Brock, very well-known locality for tourmalines. My goodness, look at that. You can see the triangle cross section, mm -hmm. and then you can see the triangular mm -hmm. cross section here. So it's almost as if they were intergrown. Yeah, intergrown and separate they are. and then yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Elbite tourmaline incorporates so many different elements when it's growing that you often get this color zonation. So this is pretty distinctive from a lot of pop rock tourmalines that you have this pink going into green. Elbite in general just has spectacular color. 
One of the things I like about this piece is this little hidden gem right here in the He's back. So cute. This one was absolutely just the one of the best of the best from this locality. And it could go home with you. Oh, for, for the meager price of $400,000. Meager price of $400,000. <laughs> I am partial to the pinker colors. Are you not? Uh, I am. Would I... you like to open another box? Oh, there's another one? There's another box. <laughs> All right. Let's take the box okay, off so on that one. I'm getting pink. Yes. Think pink. Think pink. Oh my goodness. So this one is actually very unusual. So it's a Morganite, a type yes. of barrel. Yep. It's actually from the same locality as far as Minas Gerais as the Aquamarine. It's from Coronel Morta. I immediately noticed the yes. type of termination that's going on there. Most of the time they're much more squat or flat and tabular. So this one is absolutely exceptional because this is one of the only prismatic yeah. tall uh, Morganites that I've ever seen. The quality of the Morganites uh, exceptional as well but that crystal shape just knocked me out of the water when I saw that. And so that one can be yours for $95,000. Yes. Do we need to do more math? Uh, I feel actually, like we really added. Actually, we've got one final little okay. piece to show you here. We've done a lot of unboxing here today. Have you ever done an unvaulting? Oh dear, I have not. That would be first of its kind. The last one's in the vault, so excuse me for just a moment okay. I'll grab that. There's a massive vault to the side of us. So this was in the vault because it is brand new. This is actually the first time it's been shown is, is here at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Shows. It is, like I said, by and far the most uh, rare thing on the table. Okay, right, let's you ready? see. Whoa. Uh, the first thing I thought of was cotton candy. I don't know why. So uh, do you know what this is? I have zero clue. The first thing I thought of was tourmaline. Yep. But I, that's about it. So, locality is important. Okay, Brazil. And the first part? Um, Pariba. Okay, wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow, that took a lot. Wait for it. <laughs> Okay, so some people might not know why it elicits such an excited reaction. Will yeah. you explain why we feel that way? So we both come from a gemstone background and Paraiba tourmaline is a variety of tourmaline that contains trace amounts of copper and manganese and it gives us this electric, almost window cleaner blue that is just one of the most vibrant and coveted blues in the entire gem and mineral kingdom. So back in the day when these came out, all of the gem crystals just got cut. From the articles that I've read of the folks who were on the ground at the time, there just wasn't anything on Matrix, loose crystals, everything got cut. And so these pieces were recovered around the same time, but uh, they were actually kept from about 30 years ago. And these actually occurred encased in the quartz that you see. So everything had to be freed from the quartz, uh, took a lot of lab preparation to get there. So this particular piece here is, I've, I've never seen anything larger. You know, the crystal size is just uh, exceptional. What you're seeing here in some cases is a little bit of lapidolite, but in some of these pieces, the gem crystal has actually converted to lapidolite. I was wondering about and, that. And uh, so you get some pseudomorphin replacement of lapidolite after the uh, albite tourmaline. I Sorry. love pseudomorphs. <laughs> that, was a, that was just another fun thing with this one. It's just very, very rare and very, very special. What I know about Pariba, mm -hmm. it, price per carat from Pariba is one of the highest price per carat stones. So yes. Like we're talking about, and that's in the gem high world. High clarity. High clarity, yeah, yes, the highest you know. of the high value. Yeah, $450,000. $450,000. Yeah. Just kind of completes your collection here. We've got yeah. warm colors, <laughs> we've got green colors, we've got our cool colors, we've got a few metallic. I'll have to break my calculator out and see what the total is Ooh, right now. okay, let's do some tallying. This one, this one, this 450, one 450, and then a 95. Okay, so the tally. This one, we came a little bit north of 3 million at, uh, Right around 3.070, but you know, we like large purchases, so if, if you're buying multiple pieces and, and something like this, we, we can offer a nice deep discount on that, and it'll probably let you off the hook for as low as 2.15 million. I'll uh, check with my accountant to let you know. You know. 
Okay, Christopher, you know, on this channel, we take a closer look. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we have guests on, I like to kind of count down from three and have each of us point to, to our favorite. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious to see how we might compare. Let's do it. Okay, so three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> It's just so special. It really, really I've is. I've never seen anything like it. It's just, you can't compare to that. No, it's magnificent. So y'all take a closer look at this. Okay, Christopher, you know me pretty well. Um, going over budget is um, kind of par for the course when it comes to me and gemstones. So it's not totally surprising to me that we have over $3 million worth of gems on this table. Big thanks to Christopher, big thanks to Collector's Edge for allowing us this amazing opportunity to see these incredible specimens. And if you guys wanna learn more about all the gems and minerals that you could ever want to know about, go to gemstones.com where you can read articles, watch videos about all your favorite gems. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.